This week on Maker Update, a bite-sized take on a kinetic art masterpiece, a conversation starter, pixel bubbles, launching marbles, and a remote option for WLED projects. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the show where we update you on cool things makers are making. It's all in the title there, see? Uh, it's good to be back, and I missed you guys. I've got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Kinetic sculptures can be one of those perfect combinations of art and engineering that anyone can appreciate. But in many cases, the artists behind amazing works like these are reluctant to share how it's all done. Inspired by the work of Art Plus Com Studios, The Shape of Things to Come, Andrew Kotite and Ben Ostele set out to create and control a smaller 8x10 grid of solid steel balls suspended on cables. Each ball in this array moves up and down independently with a maximum length of around 5 feet. And while it looks calm and elegant from the outside, concealed from view are 80 worm gear motors that have to be powered and driven in a smoothly orchestrated way. On Hackaday, Andrew shares all the fascinating details that went into making this well thought out, highly polished piece. From the custom motor modules, each with their own encoder, the array of homing switches used for calibration, and the custom made steel balls. Because how are you supposed to attach monofilament to a standard steel ball? Their elegant solution was to have them custom made with an M3 threaded hole tapped into each one. A vented set screw, which I assume is one of those set screws with a hex shaped hole running through it, then takes a knotted end of the filament down into each ball. It's a cool idea, right? And easily serviceable if things go wrong or a cable breaks. There's a ton of great detail here, including links to the software, which runs on a Raspberry Pi. The depth of this project is way beyond me, but I love seeing how it all works, and who knows, maybe there are some ideas here that I can weave into a future project. More projects. Over on Instagram, Charlene Gonda shares a little about this friendship facilitating device she calls the Wonderbot. When both buttons are pressed at the same time, ideally by two different people who want to strike up a conversation, it spits out a fun conversation prompt. Inside, there's a thermal printer, a big rechargeable battery for portable use, a power button, and an Adafruit Feather TFT ESP32-S2 board. The board not only holds the code for the interaction and a list of all the different conversation prompts, but it also has a built-in screen that seems to show the current prompt and maybe some details useful for troubleshooting any problems. This might be a fun project to recreate for the holidays to help spur some meaningful conversations with friends and family. I also got a kick out of this liquid air bubble display project by Realcore BB on Hackaday. It's a little desktop display that substitutes air bubbles for pixels. It's an Arduino based project that uses little solenoids to momentarily and precisely create bubbles within a mixture of what I think is glycerin, which helps to slow them down. It's a cool effect. And the maestro of Marble Vaders, Greg Zumwalt, has a new 3D printed design. With this one, the marble is actually launched into the loop instead of being dropped. He's also cut away the inner track, resulting in a deep groove for the marble to travel in. If you want to make one for yourself or as a gift, there are only a few parts to pick up. Nearly everything here is 3D printed. Now for a few tips and tools, Erin St. Blaine has a quick and easy guide up on Adafruit about how she made this edge lit sign using an ESP32 based feather board and the outstanding WLED software. What caught me about this guide though is that Erin has wired in an IR receiver so that she can use a generic remote to change the lighting presets. I figured there must have been custom tweaks to the software to make this possible, but no. It turns out that the WLED software is set up for IR control right out of the gate, so long as you wire the receiver to the prescribed pins. What a great trick. I've left links in the description, both to Aaron's project and to the WLED software documentation on remote control. Speaking of LEDs, how many of you caught Scotty Allen's factory tour of World Semi for the Strange Parts channel? The video is about a month old at this point, but if you've ever looked at the odd anatomy of an addressable LED, this video reveals all the fantastic processes that go into making these at an industrial scale. This really might be one of my favorite videos of the year. Not only do you get a deeper understanding and appreciation for what an addressable LED is and how it works, but you get to see all the incredible machines that are essential for cranking these out. 
it's mind boggling. Plus, there's just some spectacular camera work here to get these shots of specialized pick and place machines, wire bonding robots, testing rigs. Every part of this miniature process is brought to your eyeball larger than life and it's stunning. One final tip, if you're looking for a unique way to wrap a small gift this year, consider 3D printing this print in place hinged box by RWB Designs. I learned about this one from a recent video by the Ruiz Brothers on the Adafruit channel. I'll link to the mini size on Cults 3D, but you can also click through to the RWB Designs page for larger sizes as well. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this video from the Bite Sized Engineer on how to troubleshoot circuit problems using a thermal camera. When a component in a circuit isn't working the way it should, it can sometimes generate heat as an effect of increased electrical resistance. A thermal camera is a useful tool for spotting issues like these that would otherwise be invisible. Check out Zach's full video for a more detailed look at this technique and some useful tips on using thermal cameras. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what caught your eye in this week's episode. Big thanks as always to DigiKey for making this show possible and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.